We're just about to do something very complicated. We're going to meet some women prisoners and some theatre students, and we're going to make a play that's going to be performed in three weeks' time uh, in prisons in the northwest and also at Derby Playhouse. We haven't got a script. We're starting from scratch. And to make things more complicated, we've invited a crew from Open Space to follow the proceedings. last we're here. Nice to see you. Hello, nice to see you. Right, folks, this crowd here you're going to work with, and uh, I'm not going to go into loads of stuff about names immediately. Right, let's get in a circle, shall we? Good, lovely. Right, over these next few weeks, we're going to make a play. And we don't know what the play's going to be about. It's going to be about us, but that's about all we know. But probably at the end of the play, there's one thing we could rehearse, is the applause. So I think we'll start <laughs> with, the, with the applause. <laughs> OK. And Joe there takes a bow. Yes, applaud Joe. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Bobby. Hi. It's nothing like I've ever done before. Yes, I've acted in school plays and things like that. I've sung a lot, but I felt completely out of my depth, you know, and I'm a lot older than most of them there. Gosh, what does an old granny like me going to do among all this lot of young girls? OK, well, it, it, could you join this group there? That's it, there we go, fine. What I'd like you to do is, when you present... I've forgotten your name already. Denise. Denise. So I'm going to pick you up, Denise. I thought you were weird at first when Joe came in and said, you know, come on, let's do this. I thought, oh, no. Not, oh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it at first, and then I gradually got into it. And I thought, I'm like, I'll just do it. I got this mental picture of loads of stage props and really professional actors coming into it. You know, we had the Derek Jacobi type thing, you know, Shakespearean. I must admit, I was very frightened when they first, you know, the first day when Joe rushed in with them all. I thought, oh my God, what have we got here? Da, 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 da. We proudly present Sadie! Yes, thank you! When I was younger, I did a pantomime, Pinocchio, and it was just doing rehearsals. Well, here, you just have to do, just let go, let rip, and just do the most craziest things, which you would think, well, if other people saw you doing it now, you'd think, well, they're mad. I think they probably thought they were going to sit down with scripts and, um, and for it to be a kind of literary experience. But uh, it never is. The first thing, I think, is, is that people learn that their body is uh, a tool of experience and a way of sharing ideas. So we do a lot of work on that rough and tumble and fighting on the floor, a lot of singing, which is really about letting the breath out and opening up. <laughs> working together extremely well and I don't think that um, an audience will be able to determine who's an inmate and who's a student. But the next point is to find out the uniqueness of everyone's experience that it's not just writers who have interesting ideas people live interestingly and to find out about that and I'm 
immensely curious about other people's lives. My, my kids always go to my dad and like pull his ear or his beard and all. So who's looking after them now? Um, the grandmother. Grand but grandmother. my father's side. Right. Let's just have a comment. We know now that uh, you, you're looking after these horrors and uh, they, they all have... Just first, let's have a word for the baby. <laughs> but in that great voice, OK? So this is here. What sort of thing? Maybe. Anything you like. Let's just try it out. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> OK, let's just go through to Dad, the keep fit man. Like when he's smoking, right, he goes, well, you won't keep fit by smoking all the time, so why don't you stop it and join me, like... But he's still smoking. Yeah, my dad's still smoking <laughs> on his chair. <laughs> <laughs> On his Go chair. Go away, Dad. Get off my cape. Yeah, he's on his chair. chair. What's his chair like? Oh. Is it a very comfy chair he has? Yeah. He doesn't move off it. Right. <laughs> when he goes to gym. Choose, choose a... <laughs> well, obviously, I think the chair's quite important. Would you like to choose a chair? Is it a comfortable one? It's like a comfortable one. Well, choose a comfortable person. I've got the names. Oh, I see. Oh, well, you can point. That's yeah, OK. Irini. She look, yeah, she she's a comfortable chair. <laughs> 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 right. OK. So, let's get this, this comfortable yeah. chair. Who's sitting on me? All yeah. right, all right. right. <laughs> let's get this right. So, he's smoking. He's smoking and he's telling off brother for smoking. Right. Is that about... Is that like you got, you got the pose right? Yeah. It's my dad. Is what? It's my dad. It is your dad? <laughs> 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 okay, well, what about my brother? Like, my brother mumbles, you know, like after my dad gives him loads and that. He just goes, oh, 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 oh. Like, I was expecting people to come in and go, oh, she, like, like to all of us, you know, because we're just being in prison and they're not in prison. They thought, oh, they got, like, people think that we've got two heads and all that in prison. It's true. But, like, when we started talking to them and that, they knew, like, we hadn't had two heads, they just said. Which is, because we're the same as other people, it's the only thing I guess we're locked up and they're not. The reason why I'm in it is drug-related. It's because, like, I was on drugs and I started shoplifting. And, like, I was getting caught all the time. And in the end, they had to put me away. Since I've been in prison this time, I've done things that I haven't done before, like the drama course, things that I liked when I was younger and I've never got into them. Just like... I think, cos, like, since I've been 15, I've always been on drugs, so I never had a life. OK, sit down. Sit down, the rest of you. Sadie, ready, go. Mum, I've told you, you can't work the recorder. Well, we're all not little clever clubs like you, are we? <laughs> but I'm you're just looking trying. so puzzled. Well, one would be puzzled, wouldn't one? Well, why didn't you ask me? Then we could do it together. Because what's the point asking you when I'm trying to do it myself? What do you think I'm doing down here? OK, Sun tries out this video machine, and eventually, click, it comes on. What might be on the screen? What might they suddenly see? There's a video in the machine. What, what do you think? Um, love story. OK, there's love story. OK, what else might come on? Any idea? My best tape. Your best tape? My nuclear best warning. My rock concert tape. A nuclear warning? You, you, you've um, wiped out half. Yeah, right. <laughs> you see, I think that's more interesting. She's, maybe she's wiped it out. That's one possibility. I think then the scene would move on with that. Love story? Yes, it could, but I think we probably just say it or maybe an argument about it. What else might be in there? Porn right, horrific porn movie of dads. Yeah. <laughs> okay, develop, see what comes. Okay, go. Oh my God. Uh, is it true? I don't know. Who's that belong to? Is it yours? No, it's not mine. Uh. It's Dad's. Yeah, it's got a beard. It's not mine. Are you sure it's not yours? Sh sure, yeah. I'm really positive it's not mine. It's your father's. 
It's just the thing he does. Father comes in. <laughs> okay. Who's mother, let's say mother goes, mother goes out. She doesn't want to talk about this. Where's your mum, Dave? She's just gone out to the kitchen. Oh, what's this? Is this your tape, Dad? Um, that might be. Well, it's not mine. <laughs> it's good, though, isn't it? <laughs> OK. There's an idea here that we need... I'd just like to tease out... tease out further. OK. Barbara. Just in the position, just where you are. Tell him what you think. I don't know how you could watch such disgusting things. I really hate them. Uh, is there something wrong with our lives between us that we have to watch such filth as that when I'm out of the room? It's obvious you've watched it in secret. Do you have to do this sort of thing when I'm not around? I can play this for real. Yes, <laughs> play it for real. We've had this scene in our house many a time. OK, just, uh, just, just think about it, yeah, and then give him, give him what you say. I've asked you time and time again not to watch this sort of thing. What about if the children come and pick a video up off the shelf? I know you say you keep them in the loft or wherever you keep them and you only bring them down when I'm out of the room, but this one was actually among all the other videos. And I just happened to come along, pick it up, put it in the machine, and I... You what did, did I say? I actually yes. did it one night. Right. I, actually, I actually picked it up in all innocence. I thought it was Dallas or whatever it was you recorded for me last night. I put it in the machine. What do I see? Filth. Utter filth. I just don't know how you could watch such thing. I don't know how it even enters your mind. I don't know what else to say. Fine. Good. I borrowed one off somebody and it was like this all day, waiting for him to come home from work and I was revving up as, as the day went by, really beginning to burn inside. And I, just wait till he comes through that door. Just wait, just wait. <laughs> hello, hello, love. Had a good day. Don't talk to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I found this morning? <laughs> I don't know. What did you find? I said, a video. Oh, um, so-and-so lent me that. I said, oh, did he now? Yeah, well, why, why do you want to watch such things? I said, when did you watch it anyway? He said, um, the other night when you went to the Tupperware party. <laughs> <laughs> um, why I'm here. I took some money that didn't belong to me because I was under pressure from someone else, and it's not my husband, it's someone from the outside. And my husband knew absolutely nothing about it. Totally gobsmacked would be putting it mildly. It made him quite ill in the beginning, but... and the family, but they've all stood by me, so... Um, I suppose I'm lucky in that way. I have some, a couple of very close friends who've written to me here and are only too pleased to stand by you and help you when you go home. Others will turn their nose up and walk away. Well, if they see this on the television and they decide to walk away, they're not worth having in the first place. They're not true friends, because I'm still me. No matter what I've done, I'm still me. I don't feel that I've been punished particularly except by not seeing the family. And I just feel that the country's money is just totally wasted. I could have served someone else a lot more usefully instead of coming here. I could have done community service, worked in old people's homes, things like that, which I can do, nursing old people. And you could have done that for free and at least paid some contribution back to society for whatever you did here, before you came here. As it is, I'm just doing nothing. I'm just wasting four and a half months and going out no better person, really. You were going for the wrong one. <laughs> Jennifer moved from a position of being very stolid, and I didn't think we were going to get very much. But actually, she freed up very quickly, and there was a particular moment when she was doing a scene about her cat, Tibbles, who was poorly, and she played this woman taking her cat into a casualty in a hospital.
just her and me. Been like it for ten years. It's good. Go with it. Go with it. Just on the night, you know, watching the TV. Just don't know what I'm going to do. I really don't. And the cat dies. And the cat dies. The balls. Come on. Oh, come on, you're all right. No, you're not. I've got one at home. You can have one. Just like Tibbles. Try. Why not? Nobody's like Tibbles. No one. I think she was surprised how moving that scene was for other people. I've been together for 10 years. And that quite often is the way um, in theatre making. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> that's, that's what you can do. That's what you can do. It is, it is. And what I think is interesting, we can communicate. And I don't think the point is just to turn people's, you know, tears on. It's not that. It's to get people to listen to us and say, we're human beings too. And that my experience of all the things in my life that are important to me echo things in your life. I've got that relationship between me and my dog. Right. My dog got run over. He was crying that much, I thought he was going to die. And I think I... I'd crack up and want to die myself. It's this sense of sort of like trying to commit suicide. But then I might get another dog. Well, my name's Sadie. I live in Cornwall. My well, grandparents brought me up. And when I reached about the age of 13, my grand was going senile. Grampy found it hard to cope with. I found it hard to cope with. So I was taken into care by the local authority where I spent most of my time in and out of children's homes, assessment centres, foster parents, secure units, and I've ended up in prison through my own stupidity. I went through the town, the city centre, Juro, and smashed up quite a few windows, and I've ended up in prison doing an 18-month sentence of criminal damage through my own stupidity. You say it's your own stupidity. Has somebody told you that, or is that what you believe? Well, it's my own stupidity, really, because the problems that I had at the time, I should have gone to speak to people, not sort of like say, well, no one cares about me. I'm a, I'm a, I don't know, I'm a poor little orphan sort of thing. Um, there, was, there is plenty of people in, in Cornwall or in Truro, where I come from, that do care about me. But I'd just gone through that stage where I thought no one cared about me. So that's how I call it, really, stupidity. I've been to three prisons altogether. All I've been to Puckle Church. Um, it's sort of a 24-hour sort of lock-up, really. Then I went to Stahl, which is sort of like a semi-open but closed prison. And I prefer Stahl than I do Drake Hall. Because at Drake Hall, you've got most of the responsibility. Because if you do have an argument with someone, or the place is just getting on your nerves, you could just nip over the fence and off away. So there's a lot of responsibility here. Push up, everybody. Everybody, push up. OK, all the way, now on tiptoes, so it gets a bit higher. Not too high, too <laughs> We're leaving some of us behind, higher up still. We go at the knees, go at the knees. Hold, holding on, slowly. Remember how slowly we came down with our headache? Slowly, slower, slower. Everybody touching, holding. And undo her. Gently undo her. Hold on, hold on to her. Don't let go. How's that, Sadie?
At this point, we say goodbye to the inmates and go away to write a play from the improvisations and stories of the first week. But when we come back, we go into rehearsals with a script. First met Carol at school. She was busy telling a teacher to get lost, so I don't think she noticed me. I went over to see what was happening, and she said to me, Are you steering that cow bag? So I said to her, You short ass, which seemed to impress her. So we took it from there. I was shocked because, like, I first got this script right. The officer said, Yeah, Denise, I've got something for you. So when I looked at it, I went, Oh no, you know what I mean? But I didn't know, I thought that was just, I was in just one act. And I thought, Oh yeah, laughing, I'll do this act, but not the end bit. So and then we got the full script, and like, Joe said, Oh, you're the lead part. I didn't know where to put my face. I mean, I'm going to do it wrong. I bet you I can't get the lines or anything like that. Because I think that's what I've been worrying about all the time, if I'm doing it right or say I get shouted at. OK. Go for it. Don't come the innocent with me, Carol Brook. Because you're not that anymore, are you? You silly cow. You silly... Silly cow. Pink booties, christening piss ups, parties for dad's first grandchild. Oh, I just don't want it. I just don't want it. I don't want you. Just get out. Good, good. That's coming very nicely. Let's just it's about a young woman who becomes pregnant at a time when she's facing lots of changes in her life. At first, she doesn't want to have the baby. But when she does, no one will help her. And she gets into trouble. At the moment, when, when, you, when you're first pregnant, where do you actually feel it? Fear, isn't it? it have you been pregnant? Years ago, you know. You, oh, yes, you're a grandmother now. I know, but it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> just where? where? Don't ask me, I haven't had any yet. It's about... OK. But you don't want it. Right, OK. So just go for, the, go for that. I don't want it. Try it again and let's get there. I don't want it! Could you just get... Just hold your fist and just thump the floor with it. I don't want it. Do it with me. Right. I don't want it. Slower. And again. I don't... What? I just don't want it. I'm wrong. Right, and again. Look at me. I am. I, I just don't, don't want it. it. Again. I, I just don't want it. it. OK, let's try it again. I don't want it. I don't want it. I just don't want it. I don't want it. I just don't want it. I think it's difficult enough to write a play for my brother or whatever, as it is for a woman. It is difficult to write about someone else's situation. But in this process, it's not me writing the play, though obviously quite a lot of editing does happen from me, and I'm sure I have quite an effect on it. But the process is all about trying to hear as much dialogue as we can from the company and, and then forming uh, a play from it. Of course, in in synthesizing all that material, um, the play takes a particular form. It's not one person's story. Um, but whether it necessarily is um, a woman's play, I don't know. When you did it last time, did you improvise it or did you go from the script? Well, we, we were right. playing that. One was me yeah. being silent and her doing the raving. Right. And then we turned it the other way okay, around. Okay, turn it the other way around. Well, first we'll start with you doing the raving and you being silent and then we'll do it around. But just make it up. Don't try and think back. Just make up whatever comes to mind. OK, let's try your, your yeah, bum now. Because we're different types. Different types. My bum is lower than the other. <laughs> right. They seem pretty, pretty equal now. OK. <laughs> is it better if I sit right back? That's fine. Yeah. OK, yeah. good. You found the spot. Sent him down the supermarket. I 
wanted to talk to you. She saw those films of yours. It's no good looking like that. I don't understand why you should want to watch them. Our own daughter in our own house saw okay, those. Okay, don't play the reaction. Just read your, 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 your paper. Don't act undisgusted. The fact that you're just holding on to your paper. Just, just think. Think of what you're saying. Oh, what she's saying. Go, keep going. I mean, they're absolutely disgusting. And your own daughter sat in our own front room and watched them. What are you thinking about? I mean, isn't it about time you just chucked all that sort of thing aside? Don't sit there reading the paper. I want to talk to you. Good. That's it. So don't, when she actually does something and she's really acting with you, you don't have to think about reaction because she's, making, she's making you react. It's not so good when you're showing us your reaction. Just think it. Okay. It brings some excitement in my life. I don't go out to the pub. There's bugger all else in this house. Slipperettes, new carpets. Don't get mud on them. Take your shoes off. I have to have some excitement in my life. This is it. Mucky film. So what? I don't do any harm at all. Get this script down. It's good. It's good. Let's go, go, go back on that and tell us more about these, this kind of carpeted, clean life that you have to live in. I come home from work, it's take your shoes off, put your cigarettes off, mind my new shag pile, don't spill the tea. I'm a bloody man! Why have you started swearing? You never used to swear. Well, I've got news for you. You can forget about Randy Rachel, <laughs> Lucy Lost Bottom, <laughs> Furry Frida, and Juicy Lucy, <laughs> because I've burned your precious videos. What are you going to do about your fantasies now, Councillor Morgan? Not my videos. <laughs> Woman, they cost a fortune. Not my videos. You don't need to sing. You don't need to sing. Look out, look at me. <laughs> There's a high note up there I can't do. It doesn't matter. You can still find it. Let's start it again. I was with Mary the other day. I just seem to have placed that somewhere. Okay. okay. So you're in the middle of the start it's not right. It's not right. Don't bother. If I go down for it, I'll never go down. Well, that's up to you, but I started with that. Yeah. 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 Well, two things on that. Look, don't worry about, don't worry about whether it's right or wrong. An audience never knows until you tell them. That time, it sounded pretty high to me, because I know it. Well, still, you got there. So that's the point. Never break it. Never go, oh, God, it's not going to work. It will work. She'll climb up Everest and hit the note, and she did. See, it's fine. It's OK. So it doesn't matter. You just have to work together on moments like that and survive it. OK. Just, could everybody write down their cue? Don't just look at it. Write it down. I always feel slightly anxious at this point because you, you feel very uncertain about the material. Uh, you know, but that's just part of the process and uh, you get used okay. to that. Just about. Yeah. Looking forward to going to Derby. Um, I think that day we'll feel more like normal people, as we always say here. Gosh knows what normal is, but, but they all say we'll feel normal. It's nice to get away from Drake Hall and pretend. Come on, Mrs. Swan.
people have uh, preconceptions about what theatre is in the first place, that it's not a place for them. It's kind of the holy end of entertainment, and uh, it's not a place for ordinary people. And this is a fairly recent thing, that there is the professional theatre. In other times, theatre has been much more a part of people's social life. Simon. Okay, folks. On stage, two minutes. Come on. We are the flag now. <laughs> look, look, finger nails. Look at those hands, tiny hands. Come on, have a look at your lovely baby, Carol. I don't want to see the baby. I just want a fag. You shouldn't be smoking that, Carol. It's more than that. She can't cope. Where's the baby? She's here. Who are you? I'm Carol's brother. Right. Are her things packed? Yes, everything is ready. I'll wrap her up warmly so she doesn't catch a cold. What are you doing with my baby? Look, Carol. There's a place of safety order on the baby. It's the baby's best interest. She'd be well looked after. Oh, well, she's mine. That's Carol. my baby. Carol. Look, Mum and Dad are in Cyprus. We can't fight the authorities. We can't fight them. She's mine. I'll come round tomorrow. Second In the actual play itself. I can see bits where I've had in true life. I can fix, think, well, I've been there. I know what that person feels like. Well, the prison scene is, as I've said, I've, I've experienced that. And it's a lot like go in there, strip, do that, do this. Have you been here before? Blah, blah, blah. And, and it's ever so frightening. Ever so frightening when you first come into prison. Hands in the air, twirling around. Lift your feet, and the other. Anything in the clothes, makeup. Can I have my makeup? It's metal. Just the eyeliner. Oh, all right then. Don't know where she thinks she is. The Ritz. Get back there. Sit down and wait. We made a pact when we knew we were going on it that we wouldn't bring prisons into it at all. But it's hard to get away from prisons. We are here and it's life for us at the moment. If I remember Drake Hall, it'll be that. The drama course, the super people that we've met. And um, how easily they've accepted us. They haven't come in thinking, we're going to work with a bunch of prisoners, you know, and watch your handbags, girls, and all this. You know, you've, we've moved them out among them as if we've been one of them, and it's nice because you're always afraid people are going to be horrible to you. On exercise, honest, I wouldn't pinch a bird off your man. Keep it coming. Mouse! There's a mouse in me cell! Shut up! Shut up, you bloody moppet! I write in a book with Michael Jackson! <laughs> You wait, I'll see you. I will drown oh, you. Deirdre, I oh, wouldn't pinch a bird off your man. That's my I'll take the shit to The shit to out of the bastards. Ten years I got. Ten years. I warned you. I warned you. Carol was soon out. Good behaviour, she said. Sounds unlikely. Is there a boyfriend? No. The water's fine. Cohabity. 
I'm cheat scared of this. Oh, no. What? Of this, you know I'm clumsy. Oh, Carol, you won't drop her. Just put her in the bath. Separate room for the baby. How do you know it's warm enough? You just do this. It's not too hard, is it? Really, so it's just like your life, isn't it? They're seeing your life. Like, say, this pay, this Carol one, they're seeing her life, but it's not her, really, it's you. So if they're seeing how you go on and that, and where you end up. Some people might learn by it. Is it going to have a happy ending? I hope so. <laughs> Mine will probably. <laughs>